Okay. Well, I'm Javier Gomez, and thank you very much for joining me in this presentation. I wasn't expecting so much uh, attendance. I'm very happy. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, about testing. So, in case somebody <laughs> is not aware, yeah, okay. But uh, I, we are not going to talk about boring testing uh, because uh, we are going to talk about uh, testing using the browser, which is, I think, more cool than unit tests. And but <clears throat> in case uh, in case you are interested interested in unit testing, uh, we already did a session. Uh, I think two years ago, and it's recorded. Uh, if you want to check, but today we are going to focus on um, on browser testing. So let me start with the uh, uh, idea of books, uh, box, box. Um, some of you look at the bugs like monsters now. When they happen in your application, in your software, it's like, oh no, we have a bug. Uh, we have a problem, but uh, yeah, I, I found this tweet, uh, which is funny, I think. So the thing is, uh, we have the idea that errors is something that happens sometimes in your software, but in other industries that it's not uh, building software, like for example, uh, making cars, they are used to have quality assurance processes in their in their processes of making the car. For example, uh, they after painting the car, there is some people paid just to check if that paint is okay. And we, I mean, quality in software has been since the very beginning of uh, software, but uh, these days is getting more and more fashion because it's very linked to the new agile methodologies of building software. And what I want with this presentation is that we, that we make peace with bugs and we recognize them, they, they happen, they are part of the process of building software. And once we accept that, that and we are friends, we can uh, jump to a, a new uh, stage of building the software and introduce them in our process of building the software. Let me show what I mean. Uh, some of you have probably heard about TDD, which is Test Driven Development, and this, uh, this methodology is very linked to uh, the agile methodologies of building software, and it basically has this uh, idea, I have a feature for my software that I need to build, uh, so what I do first is to create the test, not even the code, I'm, cre I'm creating first the test, I run the test, and the test obviously failed because the feature is not yet coded. Then I write the code, I run my test, and then uh, the test passes, so I check the code in case I can refactor it and improve it. And that's the cycle. So uh, in this way of building software, the test goes first than the code. <clears throat> Some of you have probably heard about Behat, how many of you, hands up, have heard about Behat? Okay, yeah, he's a, a, it's a, a known behavior uh, framework for behavior-driven development for PHP. And in Behat, we have a cool thing that it's uh, called Gherkin. Ger yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a language, and it's more or less this. Uh, <coughs> you uh, de describe a scenario, a feature of your software, like in this case, we are going to create a multi-site. So you have a background, and you have some conditions, given that and that and that, and then you describe the scenario of the function, and yeah, th this is the test that you can put straight away in Behat and run it. So you're writing in English or in any of the 30 languages that uh, Gherkin already support. So uh, this is not t so much developer oriented, but more business oriented. You can write the test like that and then run it. However, we found that uh, Behat, I think, is not the perfect framework for us for testing Joomla or Joomla extensions. 
Uh, why? Because uh, in the web, it's not very important to develop pages for how they need to behave, which is uh, very linked to the TDD there. But yeah, behavior-driven development. So there, the power of Gherkin could not be applied, or not really. So you are just writing test that, a, a text that it's going to be transformed into a test, but it's just a translator. We are not really using the power. So instead, we found when we were looking for some very cool thing to test, uh, to use for testing Joomla, we found Codeception. How many of you have heard about it? Hands up? Okay. So this is more or less how a Codeception test looks like. It's not text like we saw on on Behad, but it looks like, I mean, it's PHP. I, the variable, it's an object, which is an actor, which is me. I am going to navigate to categories page, and I wait for the text category manager in the H1 CSS, so it's a title. I'm going to wait for a title called category manager. I expect to see the categories page. I'm going to try to save a category with an empty title, and it should fail. So I click, and then I click the right button, and I, this is how a test looks like. So it's almost plain English, more or less. It's PHP, but it's, it looks like plain English. <coughs> and with Codeception, we can do the other way around. In BHAT, we were writing the test in English. In Codeception, we write it in PHP, but uh, you can read it, easily read it. And then you can, using just a simple common, that it's uh, uh, Codecept generates scenarios, you automatically get the TXT file or an HTML file of the test. So anyone can read this file, even if it's not a developer and understand what's happening <coughs> in the test. Well, <clears throat> let's see automatic testing in action, but first I want to uh, show you how are the big uh, concepts that we need to learn about. Suites, tests, comments, locators, and assertions. Uh, so, suites is the, the big concept that contains tests. So the tests are organized inside suites, we will see that. And then inside these tests we use commons with uh, locators and assertions. Let's see, one by one. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to use a tool called Selenium IDE. It's free, you can download it from uh, the Selenium website. And it's uh, a tool, uh, graphical tool that can manage a uh, browser. How many of you already know about the Selenium ID existing? Okay, most of you know. It's very simple. I just click the record button, and then I'm going to navigate through the Joomla website. <clears throat> and while I'm navigating, Selenium ID is recording my actions in the Joomla website. So what I'm doing basically now is clicking the buttons at the top menu, and at the end, I will have the test already created of the actions that I'm doing on the website. So basically, for now, what I have done is clicking about, clicking community, clicking stand, clicking download, and finally, <laughs> I'm writing something in the search box and hitting the enter. Okay, done, done. That's all what I wanted to record. And as you see, we have here a test with all the common comments that I did. So I open a page, I click and wait, I click, I click, I click, and finally I fill a field with ID something. And now, uh, what I can do is just click play, and it will reproduce all these steps. <clears throat> Imagine that you have an e-commerce site, and uh, you want to know, you want to run a test every day to make sure that everybody can buy things in your site. Because suddenly, one day, 
somebody changed something and, and maybe your web is broken and you start earning money because of that. So uh, having a test that does this for you and you can run it every day, it can save you for, for many issues. And it's very simple to record a test, especially with Selenium ID. As you see, we have the, well, that will be the suite. It will contain several tests. Every test has several comments. And this comment has a locator where the action of the comment happens. So if I click where exactly I'm clicking, it's defined in the target here or locator. And if I'm filling a field, I will have to, I will have a value, something that I'm entering in that field. Well, <clears throat> the locators is something that I could write in different uh, ways. Uh, we can use CSS or we can use XPath. So, uh, for example, I have the Joomla login screen here, and the login screen has an input. In this case, is this input the password input that has a name, pass WD, and has an ID. And so, there are several ways I can locate this field to say I'm clicking here, I'm filling this field. And for this, we have a very easy, uh, it's very easy to locate these elements using the Selenium ID. You, you just need to click the select and then navigate to your browser and click an element. And Selenium ID will offer you several ways to locate an element because there's many, many ways to locate an element. It might be a, a, a title level one, it might, it might have an ID, it might have a class, a CSS class, it depends. But Codeception goes beyond that, and it provides us a, a different way to use the locators, which uh, basically the cool thing of this is that it's going to make more performant or, or test. Uh, so I can use an array, and this array contains ID, or name, or CSS, or uh, XPath, or link. These words are keywords that means exactly what kind of locator I'm looking for. If I type ID foo, I'm going to match uh, deep with the ID foo, of course. And well, the name means the, the name property of an HTML element. Uh, you can use CSS or if you prefer XPath. Or if it's a link, it's quite cool. Uh, this matches a, 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 a uh, link, yeah, easy. OK, and they are very readable which is very cool. Uh, regarding comments, you already saw it before, but the comments in Codeception are pretty, pretty simple and pretty descri descri uh, descriptive. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically, I wait for test, I click, I wait for element visible. If, it's, if you're working with JavaScript, for example, that uh, suddenly some elements appear or disappear, you can use this comment. I wait for element visible. I mean, it can be in the in the page, but it, it might be hidden. So you have a comment spe uh, specifically for for elements that show up or hide. Uh, and basically, click and see. We'll we'll see that. Uh, do you remember we talk about comments, locators, and assertions? Assertions uh, in Codeception are always based uh, with the C or don't see or can't see comments. The C comments are the assertions in Codeception. Assertion is something that makes, uh, well, the reason why we are doing one test. Uh, for example, I run some test, and here I can see I run three tests with seven assertions. The assertion is when you, mm, when you achieve the goal of the test, you put an assertion at the end to make sure that it worked or it didn't. I'll show you with an example because it's very hard to explain and it's much more easy to see. Well, in this case, my test was I expect to see an error where trying to save a category without a title. Uh, so I see in, my, in the browser screen, I want to see invalid field title. This is the error message that the browser says in com categories when you try to 
create a category without a title. So as, as long as I see this, I'm passing the test and uh, I'm asserting that the, this should pass. Let's talk about the structure of a test. And this is more architectural uh, because it's very important that when we write tests, we make them maintainable. We need to be able to maintain the test for a long time. So there's uh, three elements that we use for writing the test. One is the scenario, one is the step object, and then the page object. Let me show you them. The scenario is mainly the the, what the test should do is a business language. I want to execute Joomla installation, so I install Joomla too, and then I want to log in in Joomla administrator, I do admin login. Okay, that's a test, it's really readable, it's four lines. And what I can see in the step object is the internals of, every fun of all these functions. For example, I want to see how do admin login works. So I can go into the function, inside the step object, and the step object describes how do I do admin login in Joomla. So I, I am on the page, login manager page, whatever, I fill the field username, I fill the field with a password, I click the login button, and then I see the category manager in our case. So I'm hiding part of the normal duties of the test inside a step object. And finally, we have the page object. The page object is the class that describes <clears throat> a real page of Joomla. For example, we have a page object here that describes the Joomla login page. So we have a, a URL, that it's administrator index.php. We have uh, one field that it's the username field and the password field and the login button. That could be the page class for the login page. Why do we use uh, page objects? Imagine that someday Joomla decides to remove this button or change instead of login, we will do um, login without the space, I don't know. Then all my, my tests will suddenly fail, but I just need to go to one place and fix that new name for the button and done. All the tests are back working. <clears throat> Okay, that was the theory, but in the test we are doing in Joomla, we are not respecting very much this architecture. But I'm going to explain you why. One of the things that we have done is the Joomla browser, that is already in packages. You can use this package. It's a codeception module that uh, empowers your browser. So you have the normal browser that is able to navigate on a website. And we have created the Joomla browser that it's a smart browser that knows how to navigate in a Joomla website. He knows that Joomla has an administrator, he knows that in Joomla you can log in, you can log out, you can whatever. <clears throat> so, it's now in early stages, but the Joomla browser, well, when, when you start using Codeception, you need to configure several things, like for example, the database, user, and password, and in, in that case, you configure it in, in the Joomla browser. You specify to the browser which is your Joomla administrator user and Joomla administrator password, and the browser will know what to do. These are the current methods that we have in the Joomla browser, but it's going to grow and grow. I mean, it's, it was born some uh, days ago or weeks ago, so uh, it's still in early stages but he knows how to do administrator login, how to do front-end login, how to install Joomla, how to set error reporting to development, how to install extensions from directory. That's several of the methods that the Joomla browser has. So <clears throat> what we have come to using Codeception after we have been for almost a year doing system tests and we have come to the conclusion that the architecture of three elements, the page object, the scenario, and the step object, are we're, uh, we're making us more slower when debugging the test. When we have an error, you need to check in three places. Uh, when, and we were making less readable 
when we use page objects. We want the, the main thing that we want from our test is that they are readable. That even if you are not a developer, you understand the, the test. And for doing that, you don't really need to use the page object because Codeception is already providing you with really great um, tools. So, uh, for example, uh, in our test, I, I can go to a page and I write straight away the, the, the page where I want it to go. Administrator slash index.php, option, com, categories, whatever. In the normal way of uh, writing tests using the, the architecture that I previously mentioned, you will have something like, like, yeah, like this. I'm on a page and login manager page class and I'm going to the URL, but th this is not really readable. I, I mean, you need to click here and then go and see what this URL value is. Instead, we are writing directly in the test. But anyway, yeah, this is something that I, I don't want to explain it in deep. If you are interested, we have this uh, wiki page in, in docs.joomla.org. If you search for Joomla and Codeception, you will get to that page. And it explains all the best practice that we have uh, come to after testing and testing all this year. <clears throat> so what I, what I wanted to present here in, is uh, the work that we have been doing with COM Weblinks. As you might know, the uh, Joomla roadmap, the Joomla CMS roadmap, uh, says that we, what we want is to make the core thinner. We, are, we want to remove some of the extensions that we already have in Joomla to make the core thinner and be able in the future to be faster when we refactor the CMS. So the first extension that went out from core is ComWebLinks. And we decide that it's, it's, if it's something that we are going to remove from core, we want to have tests for it. So if in the future someone starts contributing to ComWeb links and start doing new things in ComWeb links, we want to make sure that it still works. So I'm going to show you in real time uh, how the web link test works. So um, I, uh, yeah, I'll show it to you later, but I have created some uh, comments for uh, <coughs> that automatically run the test. You don't need to set up anything. Well, it's working on Linux and on Mac OS. I need someone uh, skilled in Windows to help me to rewrite these instructions so automatically it works in, in Windows too. Well, as you see, uh, automatically they are making all these steps in the browser. And I can see in the log, I can see all what is happening, what all the comments. I open Joomla administrator login page, I fill username text field, I fill the password text field, I click the login button so I can see it in real time. Well, if you are interested in all this for, for, for contributing to Joomla or for, for your own extensions, join us. We are the automated testing working group, which Robert is part of it and some of you already, Herbe for example. And we are we are happy to to yeah help you and teach you how to do the tests. So it's uh, you you can learn for free with us. So join us. <coughs> and yeah, uh, I, I forgot to mention we are going to have a session tomorrow, and we are going to have a working table. We are going to be writing tests and contribute them to Joomla, and you are invited to join us and learn testing. Yeah, this is uh, the com web links, in case you don't know. Well, uh, it's in, in Joomla, if you go to components, web links, it has links and categories. This is what we want to test tomorrow. We have just the base of the test, but we still need to write all, all the tests for all the screens of com web links. And, uh, it's a very great exercise to learn testing, so you're all invited. Well, I just sent uh, and Roland merged my pull request. It was last week, all the tests for, for web links. 
you can check the pull request in the web links repository. And there is one last thing that is very cool. We have integrated all these tests with Travis. How many of you know about Travis? Hands up. Yeah, most of you. Tra Travis basically runs a Ubuntu server, a Ubuntu machine on every pull request, and it does all what you want. You can specify the comments that you want that machine to do on your code. So what we have done is to prepare Travis to install a Joomla website, install web links, and run the test on web links on every pull request. And I'll, I'll show you. So basically, uh, while you are coding, you have a, a, a Linux testing automatically all your contributions. And if you uh, make uh, some any mistake, the, the machine will complain. This is how it looks in Travis, but uh, I think we can do it in real time. My mom says, don't do a real demonstration in your presentations, but I feel like crazy today. Well, the first thing I'm... I'm <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how... I'm going to execute the test just to... Uh, Uh, what I use it is Robo. I don't know if you know it. Robo is a task runner for PHP, so you can easily write uh, automated tasks. Okay, so uh, in Robo, I have some comments. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the Robo test X. Okay, what it's doing now is cloning the Joomla uh, 3, the la latest Joomla 3 in develop branch of GitHub. So it's going to take a while because the, the network is slow, but meanwhile we can uh, continue speaking. <clears throat> this is the part that I need someone Windows skilled to help me to write these comments uh, and make it work for, for Windows. But basically, we, we are just executing, in this case, the git clone uh, single branch with that uh, from the repository of Joomla. OK, after that, what it's going to do, well, of course, it, it, it deletes if the uh, folder already exists so to make sure that we are working on a, on a clean Joomla. And once it does that, yeah, done. So now it's going to execute a composer. I don't know if all of you use composer. It's a very cool tool to, that it's going to bring all the libraries that I need to run the test. So after updates, OK, now it's launch my Firefox and start installing Joomla. If I open my uh terminal you'll see all the comments that it's being that it's executing and the cool thing is that it's written in in plain english so you you the logs are really nice so i'm testing to save a, a category in web links Okay, done, finished. So I run three tests with seven assertions. It took 45 seconds and 11 megabytes of memory. And I'm, well, and this is the, uh, the web links repository. It's github.com slash Joomla extension slash web links. And I wanted to show you the Travis part. So Travis uh, just needs one file, .travis.eml, where you specify all, all what you want from that Linux machine. So <clears throat> what I told to Travis to do is to create four virtual machines with different PHP. Robert will cover that part better than me. But basically, I install an Apache. I set all the everything needed for, for my Joomla, like MySQL and everything. 
and then I just run the test uh, with the comments. Okay, let's see in action. So I'm going to uh, edit, for example, the readme file. I'm going to add, I don't know, two enters here. And I'm going to create a new branch and propose a file change on the Weblinks repo. Okay, I'm creating a pull request. No, don't do that. So, as you see, Travis has just started. The, so, I, I Robert could merge now, uh, but but Travis is still working. So it's like wait for Travis, and then Travis will send a signal. So this button will become green. To make you, yeah, you will you will be more comfortable when clicking that button, because especially in the Joomla world, we have many contributions from many developers, and you have a lot of, uh, you are very scared to put, to click the merge button because you can break many many Joomla's worldwide, uh, and this helps a lot you to take that decision. So let's see uh, how is Travis doing. What I'm going to I'm going to click here to see how the pull request is going. As you see, we have these four machines, one PHP 5.4, 5.5, 5 5.6, 5 and PHP 7. I'm going to see, they probably haven't started yet. Yeah, it, it goes into a queue. And at some point, uh, Travis will start and and make that run. Maybe while we are speaking, it it happens. Uh, this is the result of a previous pull request. As you see, everything is green, meaning that everything worked. And well, in in Red Component where I work. Uh, we have we use Slack, and what I have done is to integrate Travis with Slack via web service. It's very easy. And if I if the code section identifies any error in the test, what it does is take a snapshot. It takes a snapshot and it stores it in a folder. So what I did is to uh, do a simple command that gets that that image and send it to Travis. So. Anytime I'm working, I suddenly, in the, my Travis error channel, I, I see something happened. And I have this robot sending me the snapshot. And he tells me, I found an error in Red Component, Red Member extension. We have many extensions with many developers. And I don't know when, when an error happens, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what failed. So he's telling me exactly what failed and which build failed. So I can click here and go to Travis and check the log and see where it fails. And yeah, especially for big, big extensions, it's really cool because sometimes you are adding a feature uh, on user, but you never expect that you are going to be breaking pagination in, I don't know, other screen. And this is great because it's going to test everything. It doesn't matter if you're fixing just small part of your software, it's going to test everything all the time again and again. And I usually do that manually when I started in, in this company uh, doing the quality assurance. So I used to check manually, but it's, it's too much time. I'm not going to do that. I have now a machine that does that. So now I can lay in the sofa and get uh, paid for, because the machine does for me. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, you could. Why not? I, I, I'm not, I haven't set that up, but you could. <coughs> Same as we have several PHP, we could have. Can, can you use this as a selling end grid? Say it again? Can you use uh, Coception as a selling end grid? 
Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, actually the goal of this, we are... I haven't yet tested, but the the idea for the future for for the tests uh, <laughs> almost there. Okay, yeah, that's the future for me. The the plan when we when we have all this working, uh, the plan and Robert already will cover that. Uh, we have found that the test takes too much time, too much time, because if we are testing several databases, several PHP in, in different browsers, different resolutions, in different, it's, uh, you have like, well, you always get, do more than 50 minutes, which uh, I don't know if they have changed it already, but uh, it was a limit of Travis. So we need a server that doesn't stop uh, after 50 minutes. But anyway, we don't want to or, to or test to take too much time because you cannot wait for, for the merge button more than three hours. It's insane. So we what we want is to execute the test in parallel. Uh, in Joomla, I can test uh, creating articles at the same time that I'm testing web links. Uh, they, they can be done at the same time. So it's about running the, the the test in parallel, and Robert is working on uh, on Docker to run several containers at the same time. But he will explain. And the other thing that uh, we want to do is to use uh, browser stack or Source Labs. They are they are providing browsers as a service. So uh, yeah, for example, they have all these Windows browsers, Windows Seven, Windows Eight. Uh, Mac OS, Apple iOS, Android, and Opera. So we can launch the test on any of these browsers and make sure that they work uh, automatically. But the, the, the test uh, still is the same. I want to create a category in Cobweb Web Links is the same, but I can run it on Opera, on iOS, on wherever. So yeah, that's all what I wanted to explain you. Let's see if I pass the Travis test. Job has just started. Oh, ah, you already finished. But yeah, I wanted to show you in action because it's really nice when you see more lines. <laughs> Ah, Mira, uh, yeah, and PHP 7 still haven't finished. So I yeah, still haven't started, even started. Well, yeah, thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions. I hope you like it, the concept. And I hope you, you can join us tomorrow in the session. I'm glad to explain how, how to start. And you're very welcome to contribute to Joomla. Oh, just started. And you are also invited to Robert's session, who is going to talk about the server's part. No? Yeah, but only for us to use, right? If you are if you definitely use uh, with this whole stuff, you do something better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? No?